Hello, and welcome to this supplemental lecture in the Momentum Unit for Phys 1104. In this video lecture, I'm going to do two examples of solving collision problems, one of which will be one-dimensional and the other of which will be two-dimensional. Let's work a problem to see how to use some of these ideas. So here we have three train cars all on the same track. And let's say train cars B and C are both stationary. But train car A is moving along the track towards them, and I've given its speed. I've also given the inertias of the three train cars. And what we want to know is this car is going to come along and it's going to couple with B. And then they're going to roll along together and they're going to couple with C. And after they're done, all of that, what is the velocity of the combined group of cars? So there will be some V final X, which I'll just call V final X, for the whole group of cars. So this might seem a little complicated because surely we'll first have to figure out what happens in the collision with, between the first car and the second, and then we'll have to figure out what happens in the collision between them and the third, right? So we have two collisions to work out, and that sounds like it's going to be a pain in the butt. But in fact, it isn't nearly that difficult because the principle here is that we can use conservation of momentum and go straight from the beginning to the end. Let's take our system to be just the train cars. So in particular, the track is not part of our system. And one of the things we should ask ourselves first is whether this system is isolated. Well, the train cars are going to interact with the track via friction, but steel wheels on a steel track there's going to be very little friction. Everything's very smooth. And so we think this should be a roughly isolated system. In fact, train cars rolling along tracks are quite well isolated. So we know that the momentum of the system is going to be conserved throughout this whole process. And so we can write that the momentum initial, so the total, and I'm only going to work in the x component, so the x, because everything is along our x direction, so our initial x component of momentum, which is just going to be is going to equal our total final momentum, which is just going to be the momentum of the three cars together. Well, right away we know initially these two cars are stationary, so these two momentums are both zero. And we can now expand things out because we know the momentum of car A initially is just the inertia of car A times its x component of velocity. The final, well, that's going to be the inertia of the total group of cars, because they are at this point all moving along at the same velocity, so we can just say ma plus mb plus mc, all times the thing we actually want, which is the final x component of velocity of the three cars together. And we're virtually done. Look, we just say v f x and that's just this you can perhaps see or you can quickly check with a calculator that that just comes out to two meters per second so what looked like it might have been difficult has turned out mathematically to be very simple one thing you should always do, and especially when you're working with unfamiliar situations where you're not used to how the units check out, is check the units. 
And so I've kept all the units in my calculation, and all I've got going on here is that I have kilograms in the numerator and kilograms in the denominator, and so they will cancel each other, and I'm left with meters per second, as I should. Let's now look at a two-dimensional example. So suppose we're cleaning up at a construction site or something, and we've got a cart, and it's important here that this cart is on wheels, and someone lobs a brick or a concrete block or something like that into the cart. And I am going to say that just before the block hits the bottom of the cart, it is going 6 meters per second at an angle 30 degrees from vertical as shown. And here are the inertias of the block and the cart. And let us find the final velocity of the block and cart after the block has come to rest inside the cart. Let's first start by thinking about whether our system, which is the cart plus the block, is isolated. And hopefully you see after a little bit of thought that it cannot possibly be isolated. And here is why. Before the collision, the only thing moving is the block, and so the total system momentum must just be the block's momentum, and that is angled down like so. But afterwards, the whole system is moving along straight to the right, and so the final system momentum looks something like this. And there's no way that those two vectors are equal. They point in different directions. And so the system momentum changes. Now, this might look like a real problem and might look like we cannot possibly solve for VF because we can't simply write down conservation of momentum and expect to get VF out of it. However, we're going to be able to, as it turns out, and we need to use our insights into the interactions. The reason we put things on wheels is that it causes a weak interaction between the object and the surface that it's on. But more specifically, it causes a weak horizontal interaction. What's going on here is that if the cart was not on the floor and the block went into it, the cart and floor after the collision would go down and to the right. The reason they can't is that there must be some upwards interaction with the floor that prevents that, and so they end up just going to the right. But we're familiar with wheels, and we know that at least at some level of approximation, they should result in a weak interaction. So what does this mean? Let me write down the conservation of momentum equations for this system. So, notice that I've written in the x and y components of the impulse. The argument I've just made is that the interaction between the system and the floor should be weak horizontally, but not vertically. And so, in other words, this is not negligible. However, we believe that the x component of the impulse should be at least approximately zero. And so that tells us that we can solve the x component of the momentum conservation equation and use it to get the unknown that we want, which is the x component of the final velocity. The y component isn't of much interest to us. We could use this to get the y component of the impulse, but we're not looking for that, and we don't really know much about how to think about it yet anyway. And so I will just solve for what we're looking for. Now the only thing left to do is put in numbers and get a final answer. Hopefully you can do the trig and see that the x component of the block's initial velocity is 3 meters per second. And so in the end, what we have is this. We can
can write the final velocity. And we expected it to be smaller than what we started with, and so this makes sense.